how this all started. When I started uh, doing harp, when I helped uh, put up the uh, towers at the coma, it was put up with the idea we were doing it for an oil company. We were putting it up there for what they called tomography. And uh, we came back a year later, and it was occupied by the Navy and the Air Force. And we finished doing a tune-up on it uh, and putting in all the uh, uh, transmitting uh, antenna wires, the interlinking wires and everything for the antennas. After that, it became a test subject, occupied by the Air Force and the Navy. And that's when I started seeing things happen going wrong. Uh, understand, it was devised to be a tomography instrument, and it got uh, taken over by the military. And it basically worked as uh, just like they do tomography today. They bring the earth. Uh, the ground with uh, explosives now, and they look for a resounding of what reflects back from those soundings. The same thing goes with radio signals. They introduce a radio signal into the ground, and it shakes the ground, and they get a return off uh, the reflections, and they can tell what was underneath there. What they found out was it started interfering with the ionosphere. And when they found that out, it became a, an experiment. And it's been an experiment for a multitude of weaponry ever since. It is endless, the capabilities of what HARP is. It is an experiment in the process. It is endless, I say endless, what HARP can do. The understanding is just a minute fix at this time. They have they have only scratched the surface of what HARP is capable of. So, Bill, let me ask you a question: Why are they using HARP, and what was the reason initially? Not not to say uh, when I say when I say that they they started building it, but now that they have understood what they what the working with. What are they using it for? All 24 stations. Oh, it's more than 24 stations. It's 244 stations now. So what is what is the, the reason for HARP? I mean, the primary reason. I, I know it has multiple facets, but and we could, we could link it to all kinds of things, like chemtrails, etc. I don't want to go to chemtrails right now. I want to say, why are they changing the weather patterns around the world? What's the major reason that you think? The first thing was they were trying to make a. It came when Reagan came into being. He uh, he wanted oh what's Star Wars? He started the Star Wars program, and that is when the emphasis was put on harp. That's when they was really booted up to high power. Go on. I'm trying to read some of these uh, things here. I'm not very good at this. I have to remember, my mind is kind of fading on me because of all the uh, uh, the things that have happened to me. Uh, I'm not all here. Yeah, don't look at the chat. Just let's talk in, on the mic. Okay. Well, you, you just ask me, and I'll, I'll try to stick with you. All right, so now, so the, the major reason that, that they developed HARP, go ahead and tell the history, to search for minerals and, and components for buying and uh, oil and so forth, they found out it was capable of blocking and destroying satellites. And they went from there. Uh, Reagan submitted recognition for Star Wars, and that's where the whole thing became an emphasis of a weapon. And now that weapon that they were looking for, they found out they could maneuver weather, they could 
create hurricanes, they could uh, shake the ground, they could uh, initialize earthquakes. It was a multitude of, of things they were finding out. And it's still in the process of being an experiment. Okay, so now we have to talk about, you know, you're talking about HARP being able to go into the ionosphere. Now, what happens when HARP pushes a hemoglobin up into the, uh, the ionosphere? What, what happens to the stratosphere? Doesn't the stratosphere have to, you know, kind of like compensate? As the ionosphere rises up, the atmosphere comes up underneath it and makes a hole, like a donut, underneath the ionosphere. It's like a, like a balloon. If you push a balloon or pull a, a point in a balloon and there's visible air inside, you can see it make a, uh, a donut on the inside of that balloon. Same thing happens with the ionosphere and the stratosphere. So some people are talking about, you know, I, my limited understanding, you know, I, I call it a hematobin, right? Like a, like a hematobin, like you would have, you know, in your chest if someone stabbed you, right? A hematobin, a bubble that would build in that area. Like a bruise. So then, Let's talk about how that turns into reverberation. Does that, it, because because that happens, then we're looking at something that comes back on the Earth, doesn't it? I mean, isn't there a re reverberation that happens because of that? Uh, yes. Uh, there's a plasmatic effect as HARP, the high power of HARP, hits the ionosphere. It has a plasmatic effect. And in doing that so, it becomes like an amplifier. You're looking at a huge electronic amplifier in the ionosphere. It not only reflects the heart signals, but it amplifies it. It becomes like a large vacuum tube, electron vacuum tube, and it acts as an amplifier. So not only does it reflect the signal, it amplifies the main signal. Along the way, they can introduce other frequencies on that same heart frequency. And when that heart frequency reaches the ground, should those other frequencies be in tune and in phase where it hits the ground or whatever object they're trying to hit, uh, but if it's a resonant area, it creates a new energy. Almost almost kind of mimicking planetary rhythmic pulse. What happens with the, with the moon, the moon, uh, you know, affecting the Earth in, in, in kind of a way, right? Correct. When the moon is at a specific distance from the Earth, it reaches a, what they call, harmonic rhythmic point. And it's able to sustain, just like a, a, an antenna, like a tuned antenna, when you reach a resonant point of an antenna, it develops energy of uh, that specific frequency that's hitting it. Same thing goes for rhythmic uh, distance. Okay, so now what we have to talk about is some of these earthquakes. I know this is a rabbit hole, but do you believe that HARP has been used to not, not I'm not saying create, but to identify certain areas with potential energy that they could actually use those areas and cause seismic activity? Absolutely. The primary frequency of HARP is 1.2 hertz. You figure that out to be the resonant length of uh, quarter wavelength. It's multiples of 7,282 feet. That is the, the resonant freak, uh, length and any multiple of that. Uh, but the quarter wave length is 7,282 feet. You have oil wells that have uh, 
metal stems in the ground, 7,282 feet. You have railroads that are sectioned off every 7,282 feet. You have all these windmills that are these windmill farms from front, the very first windmill to the very last windmill is always 7,282 feet on their ground loop. All these are resident to those that primary frequency. Yes, sir. So that, that could be the reason why they put that, that seismic monitor on HARP, even though HARP officially has nothing to do with, uh, with seismic activity. It's real. It's there. And all the sites of it, you can go to uh, any state in the United States, and there is a harp station of one sort or another there. Because a lot of people on YouTube are saying, you know, soundbite researchers and all this, uh, you know, crap tag, they're saying that harp has, they're looking at one particular, you know, harp station. And they're saying, oh, well, yeah, it's all crack tag. I mean, are you saying to me that HARP is actually, you know, changing our weather patterns and also protecting us in some way? Ah, that's, that is the cure, they thought, in the beginning. They thought they could devise a bubble, a plasmatic bubble, to give us protection. Um, well, for one thing, from the, uh, the sun's rays, uh, which is, it's, it, that's where the um, chemtrails came into being. Chemtrails work with harp, just as well as uh, windmills, these windmill farms. They're a tool that works with harp uh, in more than one way. Uh, let me exemplify something. Windmills uh, spinning at a specific frequency. If you notice, they all now, in the beginning, uh, the windmills did not rotate at the same speed. One windmill would rotate at one speed, another one at another speed. As those windmills now spin in sync with each other, not only do they spin at a certain rate, but as they move through the air, the fiberglass rays make up a static charge above that area. That area is going to be at a resonant length of 7,282 feet. That cloud that's being resonated above is going to be a tune antenna at that length of static electricity. You fire a radar signal through that area of that cloud, and guess what you have? Go ahead and say it. But then let's let's, let's move off of the chemtrails because let's, I, I, we'll talk about that here in a few minutes. Well, what you have there is a resonant antenna, a resonant antenna, and so same goes with oil wells. Everybody's making all this noise about fracking. It isn't just fracking. It is the oil well stem, the pipe that goes down. Every oil well that goes in has an isolator at 7,282 feet below the ground. A resonant antenna. That's resonant. R-E-S-A-N-T. Resonant. For sure. So, so this fracking stuff, is, is that just uh, the government PSYOP thing, you know, this whole fracking crap? No, it, it, it was done, fracking itself is not the problem. It's all these oil wells. It isn't just the fracking. Fracking is where they're trying to get the last little bit out of uh, wells that have uh, more or less died. There, there's hardly anything left in them. They put acid and uh, minerals down there to break up what's left in this shell rock and try to raise that to the surface. Those are what they call dead wells. That's what fracking's about. All the wells have pipe down, metal pipe, that are tuned to the resonant frequency of harp. I'm talking about 
And I'm not saying that there are not, uh, you know, you know, when we talk about uh, CMEs that hit the, the magnetosphere that go around the backside and then they, they snap and that particulate hits the earth on the far side, I'm not talking about that type of, um, you know, seismic rhythmic pulse. I'm talking about on the front side, when you say atmospheric compression that causes people to hear sounds, what's that all about? Okay, with every, every frequency that's devised, you have the fundamental frequency and then you have dubbing frequencies. Understand, the primary frequency of harp is 1.2 hertz. That is the principal primary frequency. All other frequencies that are added into that are harmonics of that frequency. And doing so, if they are harmonic of that frequency, when they reach a certain point and they are in phase, all those frequencies that are in phase at that one point become super energy. Henceforth, sound, the area of sound, is carried with harp if it's within that range of harmonic frequencies. Something could happen in one area and be picked up and amplified with harp and wind up in another area. Therefore, you get these harmonic populations of sound. They come, they go, they go with a, at a, a cycling of 1.2 hertz. If you listen to all the backgrounds of all these sounds during the last five years that have been happening all over the world, you can hear that doppling weave at 1.2 hertz. So is harp the only reason for these these sounds that people are hearing worldwide? No, there's uh, what they call wall entrapment. On hillsides, uh, like on mountains, you have a area that's capable of, of doing the same thing, of, of convexing certain sounds that are harmonically tuned to that length. And they can transpire to make an amplification of a sound, a distant sound, just like a, a satellite dish does. It focuses that sound to a specific direction. Now, what about what about these these, these people on YouTube? I mean, that are putting up these these videos and saying that sinkholes have something to do with this this resonant frequency. It has to be, if you take a cavity that's been emptied of what was holding it up, and then you suddenly vibrate it with some, some vibration uh, such as harp, and you shake it, it will collapse. It starts a, a partial movement that eventually, if that hole has been emptied, and it's a cavity, you will have sinkholes. So if you know, if you're looking at if you're looking at thousands, we're looking at literally millions of sinkholes worldwide that are recently popping up, and this is not something that happens normally. Uh, we're seeing we're seeing we're seeing sinkholes, especially in Africa. Uh, what's causing these caverns to empty, and so that that this can happen? Do you know? Some of it has been volcanic activity. When you push components of the earth out and it empties into the openness of above, that leaves a cavity below. When you take oil out of the earth in such quantities without replacing it with something, then you have a cavity. When you have so many cavities, it creates like a suction underneath the earth crust and it pulls from other areas where there were small cavities, therefore giving sinkholes a latitude of falling in. By the way, it's not just harp, it's also atmospheric compression like Billy said. That you're looking at sinkholes, millions of sinkholes that are draining because of volcanism. 
draining because of the pressure that's being built in the atmosphere. So it's not just Newtonian cosmology. It's not something that's happening just underneath the, the surface. Okay? It's also things that are happening right here, right now, in the atmosphere. It's not just HARP, and Billy is an expert at HARP, okay? But Bill, is, is, is there also reason to believe that this, the magnetosphere, when, when we have a solar event that hits the front side of our planet, that that, that CME hits our magnetosphere and then rolls around on the back side, and then like our uh, magnetosphere is like rubber bands. It's not. It's not like a blanket. It's a, It's like rubber bands. It grabs that that uh, particulate. It, it rolls it all. It spreads it all the way around our planet to the far side from face burning. And then what happens is it stretches out. And then what happens is there, there's a reverberation that it snaps back and it hits the planet. Is that true, Bill? That's absolutely true. The magnetic magnetosphere around the Earth is no more than bands of uh, flux fields that normally are in order. When uh, CME hit it, it stretches it, it pushes them out of the way. It causes like a wave to misshape that flux field. That flux field, and, and once it stops, it goes back to the normal flat position, but in doing so, it creates a movement. It creates a multitude of frequencies that we can adhere to, and it wipes out our radio signals, our, our water content. It creates uh, abnormal tides. It, it creates so many things that it, it's, it's just unfathomable. It's like a recoil. A recoil. It's not just one thing, it's multiple things that are happening. And, and many people are, are going down these rabbit holes when people are talking about one aspect over another and they're, they're focusing on one thing or another. These people are, are, are duped in a lot of ways. Do you think so, Bill? I believe they keep on falling just one rabbit hole and don't see the whole picture. This this whole thing is not just one thing. It's a multitude of things working together. And our government has, our governments uh, have thought of ways that they can utilize some of this and, and doing so. They're pursuing weaponry and uh, a way of making a protection or a devisable weapon to destroy things. But that is what it, it's, that's just one little part of it. What's happening is uh, with these CMEs coming in, if you follow HARP, you can see HARP follows it exactly. You can see on the magnetometer at uh, Tacoma that it follows, the HARP frequency follows the CMEs exactly. All right, so let's talk about the the government. Let's let's get into the uh, the whole psyop issue. Uh, so now now we're looking at CMEs, and we're talking about the government how they're using HARP to not only change a the uh, jet stream, but also using HARP. Uh, we we haven't talked about chemtrails yet, and, and we will. But let's hold off. Uh, they're also using using uh, you know harp for uh, you know a seismic rhythmic activity, just like our sun or just like our our moon, planetary rhythmic pulse, like we talked about a month ago. So how is the government using this as some kind of you know psyop? How is the Illuminati setting this up, and why are they using harp? the governments together have introduced themselves to be a controlling mass. And that includes converting us all to the digital age, taking us away from uh, the analog theories and uh, 
In doing so, it gives us a way not to be able to monitor what's going on in our world. It's a controlling conspiracy of uh, controlling us, controlling what we know, controlling what we can find out. Man, it's getting scary in here. Sounds good. All right, let's talk about how chem... Let's go, let's soften it up a bit. Let's talk about chemtrails and how chemtrails are connected to HARP and why chemtrails... Listen, one, I'll put the disclaimer out. Uh, chemtrails are not just based on what Bill's going to say. There's other reasons, but let's talk about why chemtrails are important to HARP. Just that one aspect. Go ahead, Bill. Oh, we're going to really make this scary. Chemtrails and HARP. Let's see. Welcome to your digital age. Welcome to the new matrix. Chemtrails components are of aluminum oxides and uh, other metallic objects. Uh, they even contain nano digital references. These digital keys within chem clouds can be maneuvered by certain frequencies, high frequencies, very high frequencies, and give a digital control of what's happening within that cloud with uh, digital recognized components within nano digital uh, components within that cloud. What you're talking about here is silicon, lithium, uh, chromium, aluminum oxides, a mass of, of metals in the air that are nanoparticles. Certain frequencies that hit those components and have digital information can control components within those clouds. Otherwise, change in polarity of uh, conductivity through those clouds, setting up corridors that are resonant to the clouds, making those clouds, simplified speaking, a large computer. You're talking about people being babble. And, and then it also, also, you're talking about reflective aspects of, you know, don't they use a part to, to use chemtrails to reflect and, and sharpen and be more precise? Digital components to harp clouds. Uh, there are nano IDs within the particles that are have specific components of what to do. And it's that's how digital works. It, 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 only certain components that have a certain code will react to a certain code that's hidden. And uh, therefore, what we have over top of us is not only uh, a power structure, but it's a digital computer complex. It is a huge, huge computer above us. something I'm not supposed to, I'm not familiar to uh, how this pal talk works. Post your link again.
this is why I always tell pe people, welcome to the new matrix. Because it's here. It's, it's above us. It's, it's all around us. These particles are falling to the ground. They have nano digital components to them. Uh, there's more gelons, which nobody wants to believe in. Uh, but it's got digital components that are falling from, from the air. They go into your skin and crystallize inside your uh, body to your kidneys, through your digestive system, and then work its way back out. So now what people are asking you is, does this have anything to do with blue beam? Oh, boy. Absolutely. Look at Onslow. That's uh, one of the heart stations there. Uh, you, you energize a, a energy field, a cylindrical energy field, and then you, it, it's just like making a TV uh, set. You have uh, an energized area, and then you, you focus a beam through that, a small beam, and it, it becomes physical. Therefore, yeah, you're seeing things. You can see, uh, I'm trying to think of the word, someone's going to have to help me, when the picture is made, uh, kind of 3D. There it is, hologram. You can project holograms in the up part, yes. But it takes multiple tools to do so. It isn't just one harp station working to do that. It's an energy field that's developed into the air. There are metallic objects in the air that are resonant to certain things or certain ID, nano IDs. If those are uh, hit in a certain way with certain frequencies or with certain codes, they become a tool. Jet stream. It's not just about creating atmospheric compression. It's not just about uh, a protective mechanism that's being used in the ionosphere. But it's also, they've also found ways to use it uh, to create holographic uh, pictures. What'd you say? Not only just holographic pictures, go even into even minuscule signals that uh, our brain feels or sees. It can change our feelings. It can change uh, what we're thinking. Uh, it's like a, a hypnotic suggestion. So are you talking about, uh, when you say that Marshall Silver, are you... What is the, the resonant signature of our brain? And what is the resonant signature of the Earth? Okay, the Earth frequency is 1.6 hertz. That's, if you follow all your uh, volcanic activity, you can always see that 1.6 hertz uh, being registered at these uh, sites. The body frequency is 1.2 hertz. That is human uh, resonant frequency. That's uh, the comfortable frequency. If you start moving around and playing around that 1.2, you can change people's feelings, their attitudes, their fears, all sorts of things. You can actually imprint in their mind certain video, video type effects. So do you believe in Blue Beam? Is that just a PSYOP program? You're talking about Blue Beam? I believe in Blue Beam, yes. Do you know anybody else other than yourself that believes in Blue Beam? I mean, in your circle of influence. Oh yeah, I can I can I can show you all my classmates who are dying because of this.
Does anybody have a question? I mean, we, we, we've, we've given you a whole lot of information today. Does anybody have a question? Or are you just daunted by the, the information? <clears throat> Let's take a minute for people to ask questions. Questions, questions, questions. Go ahead. Go, go. Okay, I, I follow it. I just want to know what else, what else, what else. I mean the possibilities. You know, paint me a strange picture. I'm ready. Just bring it out. Picture yourself in a world where your thoughts aren't your own anymore. The weather is not natural. The earth is being reshaped. Let's go even further than that. Uh, let's go out in the to the universe and, and to, into the unknown. What are we doing to the external portions of our, our universe? This is not stopping here on Earth. This goes on. Absolutely, for sure. Can they, can they project, uh, can HARP be used as a tool to bring down segments of the magnetosphere, which this, this question is, is, is about, can they bring fire and burn people? That's, well, you know, go ahead. I'll put you a very fine example. I'm dying. I'm dying because I have tumors and resonance burns all over my body, inside my body, from working with HARP. Uh, being in the RF fields, it creates a RF burn inside your body, outside your body, on your scars, everywhere. These RF burns become resonant to those harp frequencies. It does not matter where on earth I go. When harp hurt, uh, fires off certain specific frequencies, I have convulsions and have uh, seizures that uh, the last time it stopped my heart. I spent the last two weeks in the hospital in a basement in a hospital with 30 doctors coming in and out and they put me into a drug-induced coma to prevent me from passing on. Uh, I love you, Bill. So is, 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 are we looking at a heavy mass object are we looking at things that are happening in space? Now, we're talking primarily about the man-made events, but, but are they doing this because they realize that, that what has happened before is going to happen again? Have they, are they developing this entire thing uh, you know, to, to draw, draw people away from the natural events that are taking place right now? Have these things happened before? How many satellites have you seen fall out of the uh, orbit for no reason at all? Uh, on the space lab, do, I, I don't think people realize it, but there was a, all of a sudden, a, a urgent reason to get the people off the space lab and back to the Earth for no apparent reason. Uh, there was reason. It was because the mag magnetosphere was being pulled and pushed in such a way that there was a fear of it coming out of orbit. Uh, we've had 13 satellites come down just this last year because they were falling out of orbit for some reason. Why? Changing the magnetosphere creates a misappropriated gravitational pull certain areas of the Earth, causing uh, an elliptical orbit, which once it starts, they can't stop it. So, so how far are these satellites? How high up, up are they? I mean, how far into our, uh, you, know, how, you know, in space are they? When you say geo, uh, you know, synchronized orbit, these satellites, how far up are they? Some of them are 230 miles out. Some of them are several thousand miles out. 
it doesn't matter. They're within the realm of gravity, and any change in Earth's gravity changes their orbit. So there is something, you know, perpetrating, you know, the not just it's not just it's not just a uh, harp, right? There's something obviously, you know, causing this kind of compression, other than just man-made events, right? Absolutely. Uh, everything happens as a response to uh, how you want to put it. Earthquakes are going to happen, but given the token that something can start it earlier and initiate it uh, in a controlled fashion means it's going to happen when they want it to happen.